Hey folks, Casey here, again. Let's talk about app charges. If you're lucky, you'll find a free app and be able to enjoy some new features on your store at no extra cost. But if you're only able to find one with a paid plan, here's how those charges might look. There are different types of app charges and credits. The credit or charge will show up in different places depending on the type of charge it is. I know what you're thinking. This can all get a little complicated. So, to make everything easier to understand, we're going to follow our merchant Priya to see what kind of app charges she might find. Say hi, Priya! Let's get started. First, we have subscription charges. These are the most common types of app fees you'll probably see. Subscription fees are recurring charges for using an app. You could be charged weekly, monthly, or yearly. These charges are incurred on their own 30-day billing cycle, but still appear on your regular Shopify subscription bill. That's a lot of words, but what does this actually mean? We're going to take a look, but first, here's how Priya is charged for her Shopify plan. Priya receives her invoice for her Shopify subscription every 30 days. If she gets her April invoice on April 5th, she'd receive her next invoice 30 days later on May 5th. The invoice after that, she would receive on June 4th because May has 31 days. Now that we know when Priya receives her subscription invoices, let's take a look at what her app charges will look like along with her subscription charges. Let's say Priya downloads an app that has a reoccurring monthly charge on April 20th. This charge will show up on the invoice Priya receives on May 5th. 30 days later, she'll be charged again on May 20th and that charge will show up on Priya's invoice for June 4th. But what happens if you're using an app that has subscription charges based on usage? Usage charges are based on how much an app is being used. If Priya downloads an app on April 20th, the app would have a 30-day window until May 20th. If it's used on April 26th, she'll see the charges for this app on her May 5th invoice. If it's used on May 15th, that charge will be received on June 4th. Even though the app was used in the same 30-day cycle, the charges appear on the invoice that is closest to the charges. That's why you might receive two charges on separate bills for the same billing cycle of an app. There are a couple of things to keep in mind about apps that charge based on usage. First, they might have capped amounts, Capped amounts make it so that you can't go over the maximum threshold in a certain billing period. If Priya hits the maximum of her threshold, she'll need to agree to a new usage charge. This prevents her from being charged for anything over and above the capped amount. Some apps that have usage charges can have spending limits. Once you reach 90% of your spending limit, you'll be sent a notification email. If you continue to spend and reach the limit, you risk losing app service for the rest of the billing cycle. To avoid this, you can increase the app's spending limits. To find out how to do this, or for more information about anything discussed in this video, check out the links below. Here's an easy one. One-time app charges are just that, a single charge for downloading and using the app. You'll receive a separate one-time bill for these charges that won't be on your regular Shopify subscription bill. You'll pay it once and be good to go. You might be wondering, what happens if I downgrade from an expensive paid plan to a cheaper one in the middle of a billing cycle? That's when you'll gain some credits. Priya decides to change from a $15 plan to a $5 plan she'll be offered a credit based on the price difference and the number of days remaining in the cycle. She can use this app credit towards any future app purchase in the Shopify app store. What if Priya wants to upgrade her plan? In that case, the charge is prorated based on the price difference and the number of days remaining in the billing cycle. If she has 15 days left in the billing cycle and decides to go from a $5 plan to a $15 plan, she'll be charged the old charge plus the difference between the new and the old charge times the number of days remaining in the billing cycle divided by 30. So in this case, $10 and Priya won't have to pay the full 15. 
One last thing to keep in the back of your mind is what happens if you decide to uninstall an app with a charge. Charges for recurring apps generate on the first day the app is approved and then on the first day the app's billing cycle. This means that a charge can still appear on your bill even if you uninstall it after a day or two. If you get charged and need a refund, go to your Shopify admin, then go to settings and apps and sales channels. Click on the blue get support link next to the app you need a refund for. Request your refund in the pop-up that appears and then click send message. It's the developer's choice to approve or deny the refund. If they approve it, they can either issue you a full or partial refund or give you a credit. Whew, it's like playing mental gymnastics. That's why it's especially important that you know how the app charges work for any type of app that you download. Right, Priya? For more information, visit help.shopify.com.